Hello, everybody. It is good morning, uh, broadcasting live from Denver. So good afternoon, good morning, uh, maybe even good night, based on wherever you are. I'm Steve White. Welcome to LinkedIn Live with Steve White. Um, this is our monthly opportunity to step back, reflect, talk about what's on your mind. And so throughout the month, I get questions and comments on our on my post, folks asking, um, um, you know, Steve, tell me about this or how are you thinking about this, Steve? And so one of the most frequently asked questions is, hey, I'm, how do I advance my career? How do I get to the C-suite? How do I move my career to the next level? And that's what today's show is about. Link, welcome again to July LinkedIn Live with Steve White. Our focus today is on advancing your career. So thank you for joining us. I'm so happy to be with you today. And I hope you find uh, today's show to be uh, informative, uh, something that you can take away and hopefully will make a difference in your career. We also will be rebroadcasting this uh, broadcast. So if you don't get everything, uh, don't worry. We're going to get some more information to you. And also, we're going to try to create some information on my website uh, that just kind of recaps what we're going to talk about today. So again, welcome to July LinkedIn Live with Steve White. Today's subject is all about advancing your career, getting to the C-suite uh, so your company can be strong and make a difference. Uh, but first of all, let me just say thank you to each and every one of you that have purchased my new book, Uncompromising. It was re released in March. It's doing very well. So Thank you for all of you that have supported the book, that have purchased the book, that have uh, created book clubs for your teams. And if you have not purchased the book, please uh, go buy it. And if you're not sure, go to my website. You can get an excerpt of the book, uh, a, couple, a couple of the key chapters, and hopefully you'll find it beneficial for you. So let's get started. Advancing your career, getting to the C-suite. And I want you to think about this in three ways. One is getting there. Number two is how do you stay there? And number three, how do you ensure once your time is done, your legacy is clearly cemented in that organization, almost if you were still there, but the practices that you put in place are still there. But we're only going to talk about one and two today. We're only going to talk about how do you get there and how do you stay there, stay posted. We'll, we'll talk about the third element how do you ensure your legacy is entrenched in that organization so long after you're gone? Uh, some of the practices, some of the things that you put in place are still there. One of my favorite quotes, uh, you know, you, you can leave your job once, but boy, when you leave, you want them still talking about what you're doing. So let's talk about getting there. There are four things that I think are absolutely critical in advancing to the C-suite. Now, a lot of things have to happen. And so this is not a holistic list, but these are four things that absolutely have to be present if you expect to grow your career, if you're a supervisor and you want to be a manager, if you're a manager, you want to be a director, if you're a director, you want to be a vice president, if you're a vice president, you want to be a senior vice president, if you're a senior vice president and you want to be president, all of this applies to you. Number one on getting there, results. Let me say that again, results. I truly believe most companies promotions are based on merit. Hey, and I'm not naive. I understand politics come into play, but for the most part, the majority of organizations are merit-based organizations and getting results. Now, there are a lot of people in companies that get results, but you want to exceed the expectations. And the only way you can exceed expectations, you have to have a clear understanding with your boss, your peers, and the people that work for you, what is the definition of success? So if the success measurement is 10, then your goal is not to get to 10. Your goal is to get to 12. Your goal is to get to 13 and do it on a consistent basis. Not one year, but two years, three years, four years in a row. So your brand and you're recognized as a leader that always exceeds the results. That's number one. 
And the way you do that is you got to be very clear with your boss, your peers, and the men and women that support you, what is the definition of success? So when we get to the finish line, everybody can clearly see that you've exceeded expectations. That's number one. Number two, it would surprise you the number of leaders that work in a company that are not absolutely clear on how that company makes money. Whether you're in HR, whether you're in finance, whether you're in operations, whether you're a sales leader, your job is to clearly understand from A to Z how your company makes money. And as part of that, what role do you play in the value chain in helping the company make money? Let me say that again. How does your company make money? And based on what you do, where do you fit in the value, the, the chain of results to get to that money? How do you create value? And so therefore, understanding what is your value proposition to the company? Why do they need you? How are you making an impact in helping the company make money? Every company in America that's public, they're there to make money. They have shareholders. There's nothing bad. There's nothing wrong with that. But you need to understand how your company makes money and what is your value proposition. That's number two. Number three, I think it's very important to have mentors. And some of you who have followed me and tracked me on social media know I talk about mentors all the time. I have more mentors than most people know. And most of the people that are mentoring me had no idea they were mentoring me. But I watch and I observe. So it's very important to have, have mentors. But most importantly, you need a sponsor. A sponsor is someone that believes in you, that are always out there trying to find a way to advance your career. Because one, you put points on the board, you generated the results. You have a clear value proposition in how you help the company make money, and therefore it's easy for them to sponsor you. So we'll talk more in future posts about what is a sponsor, but a sponsor is someone that says, I've got you. I am going to do whatever I can to help you grow your career because I believe in you. I believe your talents can help our company. You have demonstrated that you know how to generate results. You know how to lead people. You know how to help the company make money. It is easy for me to sponsor you. So I want you to think long and hard. Who is your sponsor in your company? Not mentor, but who can you truly count on? And do you have a sponsor? If not, we'll talk in future uh, sessions about how do you get a sponsor and how do, you, uh, how do you make sure that happens? And then number four, and this is critical, your people, your most important client and customer. People always say, well, Steve, who's more important, your boss, your peers, or the people that work for you? Here's how I think about it. The people that work for me are number one. My peers are number two. My boss is number three. Because, see, if I have a great boss and I'm taking care of my people and I'm a great teammate to my peers, what is it that my boss won't like about that? So focus on putting your team in a position for success so they can grow their career and they can take care of their individual company. Because now this is what happens. I remember this happened to me. We were going through a major merger. I was working for another company before I joined Comcast. And I remember expecting to be let go. But as Comcast came in, the more and more they talked to my people and they talked about how I supported them and what value I brought to them, that created a very positive momentum for me with Comcast because you can't push yourself up. You can't pull yourself up. The way you advance to the C-suite is your people push you up because they talk about you. They rave about you. They highlight your good qualities to your boss and to your peers. And that's how you get noticed. Not based on what you do, but through your people because you're taking care of them. And your peers will pick that up because you're a good teammate and you're taking care of them. Why wouldn't your boss like that? So let's recap. Getting there. Results. Exceed expectations. Number two, 
helping the company make money, truly understanding the value chain where you contribute to help the company make money. Number three, seek mentors, but most importantly, have a sponsor, someone that's in the value chain that can talk about your qualities and your characteristics. And then number four, and this is probably the most important, is care for your people. Make sure they're successful, put them in a position where they can succeed, make sure they have the resources to be successful and be a great teammate to your peers. You take care of those two constituents, your people and your peers, and I promise you, they will talk you up to the leaders that are making the ultimate decisions about who advances to the next level. So hopefully that makes sense. Getting results, helping the company make money, seek mentors, but most importantly, have a sponsor, and then really take care of two key groups of folks, your people and your peers. Now, once you get there, that's where a lot of people fall off the track because I've run across a lot of executives who made it to the C-suite, who advanced their career, but they flamed out. So getting there takes one set of focus points, but staying there. And let's talk about that. Number one, results. Always there. They never go away. Getting there takes results. Staying there is all about results. Now, Getting to the next level is usually about what you've done. Staying there, this is important, staying there is about your ability to get results through others. See, the way you get promoted is tied to what you do in a lot of respects. But once you get to the next level and the bigger levels and vice president level, it's about what you can get others to do. And so as you think about it, your team, your peers, and even your boss, uh, how can you make them better by getting results through them? That's very, very important. Number two, what's your brand? It should, it should equal clear value creation for the enterprise. So back to that value chain, understanding how your company makes money. Now that you're leading the larger groups of men and women, what is your brand? What are you known for? For example, at Comcast, as president of Comcast West for 11 years before a gentleman by the name of Rich Jennings uh, took over for me, one of the things that my division was known for was talent development. The number of leaders that we you know, exported to other parts of the company is very, very high. The number of leaders that we have developed, homegrown, is significant. And so that became the brand, one of the key brand points of the West Division and how we created value creation for the company was by developing people, creating a talent machine for the rest of the company. And so I'm not trying to boast, I'm just trying to provide an example of of understanding how you create value. Number three, what's the culture of your team? Are you creating a culture that others want to get there? See, part of staying there is not only uh, creating and developing the best talent, but having other people in the organization that want to join your group. And so therefore creating a culture and an environment that's welcoming, that people are excited about, will help you go a long way um, in your career. And identifying you know, those people uh, are critical. And then the final piece is, does the work align with your purpose? I talk a lot in my book on compromising about what is your purpose? Why have you been placed on this earth? And your best performance will always come to life when your work is aligned to your purpose. So let's talk about staying there. Results through others, making others better. What's your brand? Again, how are you creating value for the organization? Have you created a culture in an environment that people want to stay there and then they want to come there? And then number four, does the work that you're doing align with your purpose? And when that happens, you will give your best effort. So getting there, let's wrap up. Getting there. Results, exceed expectations. 
Number two, helping the company make money, understanding what is your value proposition. Seek mentors, but more importantly, have a sponsor. And then your people uh, make sure that they're positioned for success. That's getting there. Staying there results through others. What's your brand? How are you clearly adding value to the organization? Everyone knows that. Are you creating a great culture and environment that people want to stay there and they want to come there because your ability to stay there will be tied to your ability to attract and keep the best people? And then finally, does the work align with your purpose? So I hope today was helpful for you as you plan your career, as you make you incorporate it stronger as you move, move forward. Thank you again for joining me for July's LinkedIn Live with Steve White. Thank you for everything. If you want to follow me, please go to my website, stevewhitespeaks.com. You can follow me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you hang out, you can follow me. And thanks again for the support of my book, Uncompromising. For those of you who have purchased the book, thank you. Those of you that are thinking about it, go to my website. You can read up on the book and hopefully it'll be in, it'll inspire you to go purchase. So enjoy your summer. I will see you again in August. Thanks for joining Steve White, LinkedIn Live for the month of July. Have a great day.